Hey everybody, it's Brandon of the Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend, but it is the end of December. It is January 2nd here now, so technically first of the year, and I am on the Celebrity Solstice doing a 12-night Asian cruise, and I've been staying on, in the Veranda Cabin 8341. Now, this is just a traditional veranda. It does not come with the bells and whistles of Aqua Class or Concierge Class. Those are not rooms that I prefer. I don't need those amenities, so I prefer to book this style veranda cabin. So we are on Celebrity Solstice 8341, and this room is going to look like I've been living in it for 12 days now, so you're gonna see it a little bit different than my weekend cruises. On a weekend, I can keep the room nice and clean. This is my 12th day in the same cabin, cruising with a friend of mine as well, so there's two of us in this room. So I wanna walk you through what it looks like to truly be in this room for a longer period of time. All right, let's jump on into the Celebrity Solstice Veranda Cabin 8341. So welcome to the outside of Veranda Cabin 8341 here on the Celebrity Solstice. As you can see, we are all the way at the aft section of the ship. So I actually don't have to wait until I get in the room to show you the escape route. You can see that red dot puts us literally at the back of the ship and there are the last staterooms that you can stay at. So we are way in the back. So if you're somebody who does not like walking hallways, I would not recommend this room to you because it is a good distance from the aft elevators. I'd also say that, you know, um, it rocks a lot more back here. So we did rock, we're on an Asian cruise now, and we rocked for the first two to three days, and you could definitely feel it more in this cabin. But let's get more into the room itself. I have it set up in a twin bed configuration because I'm traveling with one of my friends. This has been a good setup for us. Like we've not had an issue with space. It's been good with the beds. I like that there's not too much room in between them because then that's just gonna be wasted space and the rest is gonna feel really tight. So you'll see we have storage issues though. We've got shoes going everywhere. You've got your closet back here, which did give us some good hanging, if you will. The doors are a little tough to open and close, but you do see there is some shelving down here as well, in addition to your safe, but not a ton of shelving. That is the only shelving that you see right there. There's none on the left-hand side. Our suitcases did go under the beds. We were on a 12-night sailing, so I did not bring my weekender bag. You're gonna have nightstands in between the two lights. You see I've got my mantra sleep mask, and I did move the phone down below once again, and the only place that I could find my to store my book bag was here in the middle is where I like to store it because I'm using it when we go on trips and excursions. You'll see that there are two pendant lights as well above the bed. The one here on the left only has the light switch for the pendant. The one on the right though does control the room lights. There's two buttons underneath it. So it'll control the room lights as well as the pendant light. Up above, you're gonna have my dirty clothes. So you've got storage up here as well. Please don't forget about the storage above the bed. We didn't even realize it was there until we were looking for additional storage and we happened to stumble upon the upstairs or the upper space there. It's not the easiest to access, but it is there. You're also gonna have your couch here. So the couch has been comfortable to sit on. I've been using it as a alternate storage option. So this is where I've been putting some clothes that I've worn or taken off and just haven't put back because honestly, the drawers are pretty tight. You may think that there are drawers down below. There are not. This is a pullout bed, so there's a mattress down there. So this room will sleep a few more folks and other than if you want more than two people in here, you can do that. Coming over to the other side, you'll see more storage selections. So these cabinets here are just super small. They are not big is nothing. They get a little bit bigger as you go down, but they're not very big. This is the only shelf that you're going to have, and you can see we've been using it. It's got a lot of my technology up here for recording YouTube videos, but it's just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. We did get some roses, so we were the first people to come into Halong Bay for 2024, and they wanted to recognize us. We were the first tour off the ship and the first people, so just a really neat thing that they did. You also have a massive TV, so for this room, that is a good size TV, and it is going to swivel as well. Oh, I take that back. It does not swivel. It is fixed to the wall. So the TV is a really, really good size. I'm kind of surprised at how large the TV actually is. You're going to have more storage here. So this is where I've kind of been putting my pants and you are going to have your fridge down below, which is fully stocked. You can always ask your stateroom attendant to remove those items before the cruise. Um, or when you get here, you can always ask them to do it then too. You're going to have your desk area. So this is something that near and dear to my heart. And on this ship, it is tight. There is not much desk to speak of. And you see that my technology kind of takes over a little bit. This is also where your only power outlets are going to be at. So my 10 foot cord that I love and you can find in the Amazon store does reach the first bed here. So I'm going to have power when I am sleeping in the bed or when I'm, I'm going to sleep or playing in the bed. The other bed, however, has to use a handy dandy power bank. So it does not have access to a power plug over there or you just leave your phone charging here overnight. You see you've got two American and two or one European here that you can use. 
I'll also say best practice, move your nightstand to a place that is convenient for you. We did not like it in front of the couch. It took up way too much room. So we moved it over here and I used it as storage to initially put shoes, which have now made it to the floor. And uh, but now it's keeping workout gear. Plenty of pillows. We don't really use those, but we do have them. Coming into the bathroom and then we'll pop outside and show you the balcony here. You're gonna see that the bathroom is actually a really good size. I've been impressed with the size of this bathroom because there's tons of space. For a longer cruise too, we've had no issues with the shelving. They've had plenty there and you've even got some shelving down below where we're storing even more stuff. The shower here, interestingly enough, does not have a uh, removable nozzle to it. It is a fixed nozzle, which I don't think I've had one of those on a cruise ship in a while. Most of them do come with a disposable nozzle and you're gonna have the amenities from Celebrity. So you're gonna have your shower gel, your shampoo and conditioner that they are also going to give you. I do prefer to bring my own. I'm not sure of the quality that they offer, but you know, I do use it for now because I did not bring it on this trip. I tried to cut back a little bit. Heading outside, you'll see the balcony here is a really good size. We've got a table and chairs, which we always move to the side so that I can see directly out the windows as soon as I walk in. The chairs are adjustable. So you see they've got some springs on them to be able to move, or not springs, but just some adjustment settings. You can see that the table there does need a little bit more varnish on it. It looks a little bit worn, but they did come up and give us varnish on the actual rail. Coming out, you'll see the views that you have from up here. So you can look down to the hump, see all the survival craft down below. We are in a channel now, cutting up to Hong Kong. So there's plenty of cargo ships all around. You're gonna have balconies directly below here. And also I should point out that your neighbors are really close. You can see your neighbors with no issue, as you can see there, since they are in the back. Let me stick out a wee little bit. I'm not a huge fan of being probably this far to the back because I can't see to the left. I see this metal wall. Kind of wish we were a little bit further down here where, you know, when you look out, you see more to the left, more to the right. It just feels more expansive. Or my absolute favorite is to get one of those balconies on the hump. So there is my used stateroom on the Celebrity Solstice 8341. Overall, it's been a good room. One thing that I'll also point out, or a couple of things I'll point out. Number one, it is in the very back of the ship. It is a walk. So if you don't like walking long hallways, don't use this room. The second thing that I'll say is it's in the aft section of the ship. If you're going on an itinerary like we did, where you know that it's probably gonna be a little bit rocky at some point, you might wanna try to get more to the midship and go lower if that's gonna be an issue for you. That'll minimize the rocking because it is certainly more rocky here than in the lower common areas of the cruise ship. And the third thing that I'll call out is we can hear our neighbors on each side, which is always just annoying to me. It has been a New Year's cruise. People have been staying up. They've been celebratory, which is absolutely fine. But we can hear them in the cabin and it's very odd. Like I can even respond to their comments and they probably would hear me because I know what they're saying. The walls are fairly thin right here. I don't know if that's throughout the entire ship, but in this room, it has clearly been an issue. All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, bringing to you the Celebrity Solstice Veranda Cabin 8341. Hope to see you on a weekend cruise soon.